Who's written this? There was a time when I was thought as a young person in journalism. Am I not still a young... I know Lara's a young person in journalism. But Lara, prepare to feel old. We're going to speak to someone who makes me look ancient. Who's written this? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We're going to speak to Josh Tate. He's a 16-year-old newsreader from Ufcombe in Devon. Morning, Josh. Good morning, Matt. How are you doing? Well, I was all right until I started reading what my colleagues have been writing. <laughs> so, uh, Josh, you're, uh, how, did, how did you end up as, are we calling you Britain's youngest newsreader? Well, I just finished my GCSEs and I wanted some work experience, to be honest. And my friend's mum was, well, my, my best friend's mum and my mum were at maternity at the same time together. Or they're in the t- maternity yeah. ward, sorry. And I've I've always wanted to do something about like media and I turned up for what was just going to be an interview about doing sports reporting at the local radio station so Devon's Radio X and I I was told I had a great voice and it went and from that point onwards it's just everything's changed <laughs> really so you so um uh, you're now reading the news on the Radio X breakfast show well yeah one or two mornings a week yeah. I only started that last week though wow <laughs> And how do you, I mean, you have got a lot, I mean, I have to say, Josh, you have got a lovely voice uh, for 16 year old. Not all 16 year old boys' voices have settled down quite so nicely. Um, uh, do you think you'll stick with this? I hope so. I, well, my dream is to be a, a Formula One anchor, I think, on the, on Sky Sports, something like that, perhaps, or maybe even on Talk Sport uh, show on there, to be honest. I, that's what I'm really into. I can have sport. a word. I can have pop upstairs and have a word. Talk sports, our sister stations. We can try to sort that out. <laughs> My former uh, producer, Alex, on the Red Box podcast is now a, a commentator for Formula One. Um, so I'm basically suggesting I can get you all, all manner of jobs. If uh, What will you be doing alongside? Presumably you're at school at something at the same time. So I'm at college at the moment, yeah. and college is my it's my um, priority at the moment. Being at college to get my college course done. So I'm at Exeter College at the moment. So I'm Devon boy. I know you're from Somerset over the border, but you know, in both of us have avoided picking up the accent, though I noticed, Josh. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> no, no offence. <laughs> and what advice? What, what advice? What tips have you been given for for reading the news probably? Because we're, we're going to get you to read the the, uh, the midday headlines in a sec. So what's your have you been given some tips on, on how to read the news properly? Well, just to be quite conversational, confident in my speaking and not to stress or overthink if something goes wrong because in a, being in a live studio, you can learn from other people's mistakes. And I can tell you that because the boss of Radio X told me to watch and learn when he went live to announce the Prime Minister Liz Trust resigning. And when, when it was an, a live show, he said it was Theresa May and I had to correct him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always that's always a good thing. Um, how are you? How are you on pronunciations? Because uh, it's basically the worst bit of, of my job. It's particularly when I open a a script for a sort of live news story, and I've got no idea how to pronounce that that name or place, which is which is looming in the script. That could be a struggle, but you just have to be confident and. It... What, ha- what happens, happens. That is a very <laughs> good point. If in doubt, just just take a good run up on it and just say it like you mean it. So Ufcombe is a prime example. Of juice was, uh, uh, I can't remember how, how you were even mispronouncing it, Andrew, but Ufcombe, Uf, 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 Um uh, But I suppose the fact you're from Devon means that you, you know what all those places are. Yeah, so how do you say it? It's Ufcombe, isn't it? Ufcombe, that's I, how I'd say it, Ufcombe, yeah. yeah. Well, you <laughs> yeah, know, so, you yeah. live there. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I went to school there for the last five years, and <laughs> uh, yeah. very good, very good. And then, um, and then after you do, after you finish your A levels, what we do next? Do you think? I, I'm sort of, I'm hoping to go to university, I think, or maybe even a pre- an apprenticeship. But anything that comes up, I'm just grateful for all the opportunities which are coming my way at the moment, and I appreciate all the all the things that are going on. Absolutely right. Well, here we go. Then you're about to get reading the news on Times Radio on your CV. Are you ready? I think so. Take, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> of course. Norm, normally, when I do the midday uh, um, uh, headlines on a Wednesday, I almost always fluff one of them. So you are allowed one fluff, Josh. Right, get ready then. Well, stand, stand by your beds. Uh, PMQ's unpacked is coming uh, next. Tim Shipman is here, poised. He's got a caffeinated drink and everything. He's pumped and lively and ready to go. Uh, get on the YouTube channel now. PMQ's unpacked is next on Times Radio. Across the UK, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker. This is Times Radio.
It's 12 o'clock. I'm Matt Chorley and this is Times Radio. PMQ's Unpacked is next, but first the news with Josh Tate. At 12 o'clock, I'm Josh Tate. The Prime Minister and French President have welcomed news from Germany that it will allow its Leopard 2 tanks to be sent to Ukraine after weeks of persuasion. Britain agreed to send 14 tanks two weeks ago and the US is expected to send 30 as well. The head of the Metropolitan Police says poorly policy and decision-making led to former PC David Carrick becoming and remaining an officer. Sir Mark Rowley's apologised to women across London for the case, which involved sex offences against 12 victims. A Conservative peer has become the latest Tory to call on Nadeem Zahawi to consider his position. Lord Robert Hayward, a former MP, said the Conservative Party chairman should think about standing aside while Parliament's ethics watchdog investigates his tax affairs. And the Home Secretary's plan to reduce the time for foreign students can stay in the UK after finishing their course is being strongly opposed by the Department of Education. At the moment, they can stay for up to two years without a requirement for getting a job, but Suella Braverman wants that to be six months. However, leaked advice has revealed that the Department for Education is attempting to block the changes as they would harm the UK's attractiveness to international students. There'll be more news in half an hour. Josh, thanks so much for the news. Josh, thanks so much for coming on and doing that. Best of luck with it all. I have a feeling you'll be back. You'll be, we can get rid of Carla Bentley. It's, be it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on today. Good luck with it all, Josh. That's Josh Tate there, Britain's youngest newsreader reading our news.